Hello, welcome to another episode of TheAquaPix.com. Today's discussion is going to be revolving around a film called Night Catches Us. Really good film. It came out in last year, 2000, I think, uh, 2010. And it was written and directed by Tanya Hamilton. And the movie opens up in Philadelphia, I think, um, 1976. And it revolves around the story about a man named Marcus, who is played by Anthony Mackie. He is a Black Panther or a former Black Panther who is returning home after four years to his father's funeral. And when he does return home, he receives a lot of um, pushback from his fellow ex-brother Black Panther party members because they are under the impression that he ended up snitching on one of their brothers who ended up getting shot and killed. When in all actuality, that wasn't what had happened at all. And one of the things that I noticed about the movie was that a lot of the essential themes to take away from it were acted out by one of the supporting actors. His name is Amari Cheatham. He plays Jimmy in the movie. And Jimmy is like the nephew or one of the neighborhood kids of Patty. But any, anyway, a lot of uh, bad things happen to him. But these are how we pick up on the things and how we learn the lessons from the movie. And one of the main things that I noticed within the movie was was about misunderstandings and half-truths. Jimmy was, he was picking up cans to earn a little money on the side. And one of the police officers said that he was trespassing on property. So as he... Jimmy proceeded to leave. One of the cops arrested him and told him that he shouldn't have been there in the first place and he was just being a total asshole. And so Jimmy, um, you know, he called him out on it. And this man beat him up, arrested him, didn't tell him what he was being arrested for. And then Patty had to bail him out of jail. And when she came to bail him out, she verbally scolded him because she wasn't fully aware of the whole situation. She didn't even bother to ask exactly what had happened from Jimmy's perspective. So automatically he got blamed for being arrested and brutally beaten and harassed by a cop. So that's just one of the examples of how misunderstanding and half-truths can taint a situation. And the second thing that I noticed was about, you know, when does supporting your own people become your downfall? And the reason why I said that is because Here's another example. Jimmy was picking up aluminum cans, as I had mentioned earlier, to earn a little pocket money on the side. And whenever he was turning his cans to a white guy, he felt that he was being uh, shorthanded. The white guy wasn't paying him the money that he deserved. So instead, he was like, I'm not going to support you anymore. I'm going to go down the street to so-and-so who happened to be a black guy. But come to find out, the black guy was giving him less money than he probably would have earned had he just, you know, stayed on with the white guy. So it's just one of those things. But um, that's one of the things that I had noticed. When does supporting your own people become a downfall? Another one of the things that I noticed in the movie was primarily about vengeance and how it usually does more harm than good because there is ill intention behind it, behind the action. And this is symbolically represented in the movie. And we see this especially when Jimmy, right before he is killed by all these police officers, he's sitting underneath the tree. And I guess he's pondering, you know, the course of his life. But as he's looking, he's, as he's thinking, he's looking up and he's looking at all these tree, tree limbs that are tangled and entwining each other. And you notice that hardly none of these branches that are tangled in each other are producing any fruit. They're bare looking. So right before he ends up getting killed, I guess he's pondering about the course of his life and how he tries to be a man, you know, despite being oppressed or in spite of being oppressed. And, you know, he goes out and he kills a cop, you know, as a way of retaliating. But in all actuality, He's committing a vengeful act, and there's no fruit involved in it. It's fruitless. It's a fruitless act, in other words. So that's one of the things, the other things that I noticed. Another thing within the movie, and this was the big, big one, 
was primarily about paranoia and how it can destroy you. <laughs> Oh, that was corny. So anyway, yeah, it was about paranoia. And um, we see this represented symbolically throughout the movie, too. Uh, one of the instances was when um, Iris, who is Patty's daughter, uh, she was watching um, an olive oil cartoon. And olive oil was being carried away by ghosts. The second symbolism that is alluding to, you know, the theme of paranoia was when uh, Patty's boyfriend at the time he told Patty that she was fighting imaginary enemies and another uh, way that you know the theme of paranoia was expressed throughout the movie symbolically was when Iris you see Iris the way she's interacting with everybody Iris once again is Patty's daughter and she questions the death of her father because she never really knew him and it's almost as though she's growing up in a haunted house. And she even addresses it herself. She tells her mom, like, why didn't we leave? You know, my dad was shot in this house. This isn't normal. So we see by her interactions with her mother that the paranoia that she's experiencing and all the unanswered questions that she has, it starts to eventually turn into resentment. So that's one of the things that I see, which is very strong throughout the movie, is paranoia and how it it's, it's, it's personified in, in different ways or symbolically represented in different ways. And another strong theme that I noticed in the movie was about how when you don't let go of your past, it becomes a defining point for you. It starts to define who you are. Patty never left the house because she felt guilty for turning in her husband or her fiancé. So she felt like she was obligated to help the community and to stay there but it wasn't out of joy, it was more so out of obligation and guilt. So that's one of the other um, things that I noticed. And here's another strong thing too. This movie is so laden with just really substantial content. But another one of the things that I noticed throughout the movie was bigotry. Bigotry is not exclusive to race. As a matter of fact, I think more and more we see now in our society that bigotry transcends race and permeates class. But um, the reason why I say that is because one of the characters who who is played by uh, Wendell Pierce, he plays uh, a police chief. And he's working with Anthony Mackie to try to bring, you know, the Black Panthers in Philadelphia down. But Anthony Mackie is not having it. He's really, he never really signed on to begin with. But uh, Wendell Pierce, or the police chief, he basically says, look, I own you. I have information. I could turn Patty in, so you better help me out. And the way he, he expresses this, his language, you notice that he's very domineering. And he's also a fellow black guy, but he says, I own you, boy. You're mine. I own you. Like, you know, that's bigotry within itself. It's a form of oppression. And we see that in the way he uses his language is very much reminiscent of a racist white man from, you know, Jim Crow South. I own you. So, and here's another thing. And this wasn't necessarily a theme in the movie, but it was um, an important notion that I didn't know. I never knew that the FBI uh, conjured up false propaganda, making it so where, you know, there was brochures being passed out throughout black neighborhoods, inciting young black youth who might be a little bit misguided, who might be frustrated with the situation that's going on. They were putting together pamphlets and brochures to incite violence against police officers. And that's what the, the, uh, the Black Panthers, they weren't about violence at all. They were about community development, you know, and simple things too, like making sure, you know, Little kids had a nutritious meal before they went to school, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, making sure that, you know, residents of low-income housing had adequate housing. But a lot of people were under the misconception, once again, misconceptions and half-truths, a lot of people were under the misconceptions that Black Panthers were all about radical violence and retaliation and just, you know, being, being violent. 
So with that said, that concludes my analysis on uh, Night Catches Us. This is a really good movie. I really liked it. Oh, and also, <laughs> the movie, what may also made the movie good was that the score was done by The Root. Yeah. Enough said. So anyway, uh, once again, thank you for joining me, and I hope to hear from you soon. As always, stay blessed and highly favored. Thank you.